Hello everyone, my name is Tynington, and welcome back to Cupid, a visual novel. Now in the last video, we got, we got comfortable with killing me. It seems as though Catherine and Gillamy has finally got into an agreement. Or more so, they finally got around to hearing each other out. Their, each other's feelings, thoughts, ideas. And now everything seems to be better. But, you know how that story goes. Let's continue. Catherine, do you love me? With all my heart, Gillamy. I've loved you for what it seems like my whole life. The candle flickered. Gillamy slipped his hands on Catherine's hair and gently pushed her face towards his. She closed her eyes and let the sensation of his lips take her. Ooh. His mouth left sweet traces on her skin, as if washing away her sins blessing her, anointing her. Catherine tasted salt in his kiss, like the taste of tears. She wanted to take away all his sorrows. Gillamy held her tightly, longingly. She drowned herself in his embrace. His palm caressed her neck as he kissed her, sliding down her arm in the curve of her waist. His fingers tugged gently on her skin. Catherine darted her tongue inside his mouth. Okay. Uh, breaking, the, breaking the wall a bit. It's getting weird real fast. And Gilomi answered with his own. Oh gosh. She wanted his every kiss. She felt pleasure to know he was hers. Her hands ran up and down his back as their kisses grew heavier. Gillamy broke away. Karth, let's stop. You're tired. Catherine looked into his eyes and saw he wanted her despite his protest. After the events of that night, there was a despair in Catherine that longed to be quenched. It was a selfish atonement. Atonement. Perhaps a hunger for self-worth. She ran her tongue over his lips. Oh gosh. I want this. Kath. Catherine sat up beside him, massaging his soldiers at neck. She dipped her head and gave him a long, deep kiss. Feels like I'm reading a fan fiction now. She opened his shirt, nibbling on his ear as she did. Oh gosh. The clench of his jaw, his aroused breath, the cord of his neck, they were her little trophies, her bliss. Catherine pulled his shirt free. She traced the finger down his bare stomach. She watched in ecstasy as he bit his lip. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, to know that he couldn't resist her made her swell with pride. Gillamy sat up on the bed, finally reaching for her, finally giving in. It felt like a victory to her. Um, Gillamy grabbed her neck and pulled her face to him. His tongue bore deeply into her. Catherine pulled on his hair, surprised at his sudden intensity. Heat ran through her body. Ugh. She savored his dominance. His lips ran down her neck to her chest. Every nerve felt tender. Every length of his skin felt raw. It was a reminder, an awareness that her flesh was a living thing. Tension built up in her insides. 
Gillamy's breath tickled her ear. He whispered her name, and it sent a violent tremor throughout her skin. It was start in her torso, surging through her, starling the roots of her hair. Her throat made short, hurt sounds. She would usually stop here, an irksome apathy would take hold of her, and she would stop. Now, this wasn't like the other times. Catherine felt a hot throbbing at the pit of her stomach. A clench in her body wound her up tighter and tighter, putting her in danger of release. This was different. This was... Do you love me, Catherine? Kill me, I. Her throat, her throat, ugh. her voice came out throaty and thick. Kill me, laid her down on the bed. Kill me, dug his tongue on the hollow of her neck as his hands explored her. The soft sounds returned to her lips. Kill me, covered them with his mouth. Yeah, this is a fan fiction I'm reading. Her voice echoed in her head, although it's a visual novel, so what's the difference? Ha 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 ha. Her voice echoed in their heads. She wanted to scream, and the scream would come from, her, from very deep. Do you love me? <laughs> um. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, I tried. Oh god, I love you. Oh fuck. Uh, I'm, I'm weirded out. She said in an urgent, desperate frenzy. A high pitched sob escaped her mouth as something snapped inside her. Catherine opened her eyes. Oh, gosh. Uh. She caught something alarming as she stared up at him. Uh, yeah, that's scary. He didn't look like Gillamy in the shadows, unlicked by the candlelight. His features were the same. His eyes were in the same place. His nose and lips were the same shape. But this man was a stranger. He did not care for her, like how a snake didn't care for its prey. For a brief second, she was afraid. A tiny, tiny voice told her to run away. But that voice was washed away by a wave of carnal desire. The stranger grinned at Catherine. Ooh. Oh. My. Um. Um. Uh. Faster now. Deeper his kisses went as if reaching for something inside her. His weight on her body excited her, but it also felt like a prison. Run, Rabbit. Run, Rabbit, run. Catherine viciously devoured his lips. Her hands cruised south, kneading and clutching greedily. Ah! Uh, her legs were draped around his waist. Um, okay then. A force overtook her. A hunger. Here comes the farmer's gun. She tried to ignore the growling coldness in Gillamy's eyes. She tried to ignore the way her body moved on its own. Run, rabbit. Run, rabbit, run. Her hands found the clasps of his trousers. And she undid them. I don't. This music makes me feel uncomfortable. In this current scene as well. Quickly now. Quickly. He bit on her shoulder. She felt more of his teeth than his lips on her body. Catherine scolded herself for being aroused. Oh gosh. Her mounting terror only served to aggravate her urges. She wanted this. I want this. She was hungry. I, I am hungry. 
she heard the man snicker. He wants his farmer's pie. So don't stand idly by. Run, Robin, run. His tongue raked her neck. He gripped her hair so tight it hurt. Is this is Fifty Shades. Catherine gasped. The shiver was from both pleasure and fear. A dangerous mixture. But it was cruel. There was no warmth. Just cold, hard greed. And yet, she couldn't help but want him. She wanted to please him. With their every movement, Catherine felt her energy wither away. A heady, nauseous feeling of milady was clawing at her. What was missing? What was taken away? She didn't know what was gone till it was. The final scream of protest died in her mind. The last that was left of her lucidity. The urge to escape left. No more reasons to stop. Catherine moaned. Stop? No, 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 I must not stop. Why did I even think that? What if he'd hate her? It was an agonizing thought. She had to give him more. More. His eyes observed her with cold amusement. Catherine touched his chest in reverence. His eyes were cold, but his body was like fire. In her mind's eye, he had started to become something else. A winged creature engulfed in flame. Both hot and cold and magnificent. Both beautiful and terrible. Both dark and light. At times, she would be on the bed with a man she might remember as one she once loved. Other times, she would be floating, suspended on a dark chasm of flesh. There was a creature with her, some, somebody she both loathed and adored. Sometimes there were two people. Sometimes there was only him. Only him. The woman called Catherine didn't exist. She was merely an exist extension of his mind. Soon, all of her would be gone, little by little, disintegrating to be a part of him forever. This is not looking good. Oh, bliss. She was prepared to give everything to him. It didn't even seem a worthy sacrifice to lay at his feet. But no, all he asked for her was her heart. That small, pathetic thing. It had always been his, anyway. She gave it gleefully. He was so generous and considerate. Benevolent. Fair. She worshipped him. He was her god. Oh, this is not good. Please want me. Please find me pretty. She craved his love above anything else above fear and confusion, above the mourning at something precious loss. Love me, please, love me, she begged. I'll do anything for you. Anything? Oh God, his lips did not move, save for a smile. The words simply dropped in her head, echoed, and took root. Catherine's eyes lost their glimmer. A anything. Then tell me again. I want to hear it. Do you love me, Catherine? 
I. Her name on his lips was the only reminder of her former self. I do. I, I love you. I love you so much. A wave of fire burns her lips as their mouths entwined. His passion heightened, his back arched. Sweat beaded on his forehead and traced his temple. What a wondrous sight. He was ice beginning to thaw, a sun on the verge of eclipse. His coldness replaced by a radiating heat that melted and fastened her to him like fire with metal. Really? Do you really love me? Yes. She screamed. Y yes. The candle fizzled out. Beneath the depths of her hazy mind, she was relieved she didn't have to look at his face. Oh gosh. She, t she tastes just like the richest chocolate. The finest wine. I can't stop. My whole body shivers with the taste of her. Her breath on my neck. Her fingers scratching at my back. Her lust gives me sustenance to move faster. To devour her faster. Stop. I knew so long would be worth it. I have been her lover for years. And this flavor is divine. My head spins. My appetite swells. I can't stop. I can feel her excitement mounting with her helplessness. I will lick my lips in delight. I haven't breathed so deeply for a long time. You're taking too much. Her love is ecstasy. It is laced with anger, reverence, disappointment. Pain, memories, all different relishes and morsels melding into one. Stop it. Her love is a delicacy. You're destroying her. I can't stop myself. I haven't tasted this kind of love for so long. Flirtations and physical attraction can only get me by four so long. I was going to wait. There was a wanting in her love. Confusion, doubt. But that helping of guilt tinged the flavor perfectly. I must feed now. Her love is the most perfect tonight. My body wants her. I couldn't stop now, even if I wanted to. Liar. And I almost let you escape. To save her. I almost ran away. I love her. I love her. And tomorrow? Maybe. What will become of her? I will find another. Next time. Something insignificant. I want to relish this taste a bit more. No. No. With every move, I feel her love osmos into my other mouth. She clings to me, her moans louder, her 
bare chest glistens with sweat. And she is beautiful. It, it won't be long now. A final drawing of breath. Do you love me, Catherine? Give me all your love. All of it. Give it to me. I want it all. It's mine. Mine. Catherine. Give me more. I want more. More. God, I got really intense. Um, oh, oh. Hi, Rosa. Oh, no, don't, don't do that. Please go back. Oh. Rosa stood in front of the door to Catherine's room. Her hand raised to knock, but she didn't move. Doubt was creeping into her mind, like a spider crawling on a wall. She remembered the feeling of hunger from the night they had kissed. It was both familiar and utterly alien, like an instinct, an urge she hadn't felt for a long time. A shiver ran down her spine at the memory. She's avoiding me, isn't she? She hadn't seen Catherine for a few days since that night. She had been spending a lot of her time alone, locked away in her room. When Rosa saw her in the chatio, she would excuse herself and leave. Rosa never got the courage to push the issue. The days had passed, and Catherine's behavior began to worry her even more. Ah, uh, yes, we have beat a mother again. Okay, just the rule that we made at the beginning. We will be a supportive parent, even though the choices all suck. But with these choices, it's either we blame someone else or we blame her. Unlike either of them. Although I'd rather not blame my child. So I'm gonna go with this option. She is selfish, just like everyone else. It's not good, but it's better than that one. Oh fuck, come on. What did you expect? She is selfish, just like everybody else. She used you as an experiment, and now that her curiosity is sated, She's done with you. You don't matter to her. You probably never did. Which is a good thing, darling. You see her true face. Da da da. No matter. She's never going to love you like Mother does. Like all of the others. She's going to leave you in the end. And then you're all alone. Only Mother will stay with you forever. And love you. So be a good child and listen to what I tell you. Rosa bit her lip, her lower lip. This was all her fault, wasn't it? No, no. She needed to make it right. If Rosa talked to her properly, she was sure they would come to an understanding. She had to explain to her. What exactly? They had both been drunk, and the kisses didn't mean anything. Her stomach churned as this thought. In the end, it didn't matter what Rosa wanted. Catherine obviously regretted what had happened. She didn't want to lose her friend because of too much wine. Rosa gently knocked on Catherine's door. Hey, Catherine, may I come in? Please, Catherine. I I'm sorry for the mess, but can we talk? Rosa waited for an answer. None came. 
Rosa turned the handle slowly and entered. Oh gosh. Usually, Catherine's room was brightly lit. The windows lightened a fresh breeze, off the carrying the sweet smell of flowers in spring. Right now, however, curtains were drawn closed. The few candles burning on a desk weren't enough to banish the darkness completely. Oh gosh, no. The air hung heavy in the room. Catherine didn't turn around when the door opened. She just stood there, unmoving in front of a wall. The sound of something scratching along a rough surface filled the air. Rosa felt a shiver run down her spine at this sound, and her muscles tense instinctively. She approached Catherine slowly and apprehensively. Oh God! When she came closer, she could hear that Catherine was whispering was whispering the same few words over and over again. He, he loves me. He, he loves me now. Catherine giggled. Uh oh. He loves me. He loves me not. Catherine, are you all right? Rosa stepped next to Catherine and peered at her outstretched hand. In, in the dim light, it took a moment for her to make sense of what she saw. Oh God. Catherine was stretching, scratching at the wall. Oh, Catherine. The damage she had done to the wall was nothing compared to what she had done to her fingers. Kath? Oh my God. Catherine, stop. Rose's guts twisted horribly. She grabbed Catherine's shoulder to turn her around, away from the wall. She blinked a couple times before finally reacting to Rose's presence. Tears welled up in Catherine's bloodshot eyes at the sight of her friend, spilling over her pale cheeks and chapped lips. She held on tightly to Rosa and stared sobbing uncontrollably. Kath, what's going on? Why are you hurting yourself? Catherine tried to pull herself together as best as she could, wiping her nose on the sleeve of her soiled dress. It was heart-wrenching to look at the mess that her friend had become. Oh, Rosa, you need to help me. You need to protect me from him. Don't let him touch me. Who? Let him what? Well, why do you need me to protect you? Suddenly, Catherine shushed her, a finger to her lips, and with a scared expression on her face. She leaned an ear towards the door and listened intensely for a moment. Oh, he's here? The scared expression turned into manic and frightening glee. I think he's coming. Kill me, honey. Kill me, I love you. Oh, gosh. After yelling the last words, Catherine started sobbing again with more tears streaming down her face. Before Rosa could try to console her, however, her sobs faded into hysterical laughter. It barely left time for her to gasp for breath. Oh, killing me. I, I love the way you pulled me close to hug me. Oh, gosh. And how kind you are to everyone you meet. And your eyes, your eyes. What's going, what's going on here? Yulimi stood in the door, frowning. His eyes wandered across the room and caught sight of Catherine. His face froze in shock. 
Catherine stared wide-eyed for a second. Then she snarled at him like a ferocious animal. Oh. You bastard! Get out of my room! Get lost! She stormed over to the desk and grabbed a letter opener from the table. Oh no! With this weapon at a firm grip and malice in her eyes, she rushed to Gilby. Don't you dare show your face to me again! Catherine, no! Oh, fuck! The knife plunged into Gilliam's arm. Oh, fuck! Um... Gosh... I'm gonna end this episode here. I always feel I always feel uncomfortable at the end of these episodes. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Cupid, the visual novel. This I can I never know what's going on with this game. There's so much going. There's so much happening that. Oh. If you enjoyed this, be sure to check out the other videos I post. My name is Sunnington, and I'll see you all next time.